The Tokener Explains, a beginner's guide to developing smart contracts using the Solidity programming language on top of the Ethereum blockchain platform. In the last couple of episodes, we've been talking a lot about the basic functionality of Solidity. And while we haven't covered everything yet, we are almost there. So in this episode and in the next, we will be using this and put our knowledge so far to, into practice and create a very interesting smart contract that allows us to do something useful, to play a game of tic-tac-toe. In this first part, I will be, talk a, be talking a little bit about static arrays, which is the final piece of the puzzle we will need to implement a tic-tac-toe smart contract. And then we will be putting down the first part, the basic setup of this contract. And then in the next episode, we will move on to implementing a lot of the logic, restricting how uh, and whom is allowed to put pieces on the board, and also checking if the game has won, has been won. All right, about arrays. If you've used a different programming language before, this concept will not be new to you. If not, an array is a sequence of values where, uh, where which are useful if you have more than one of them. In our game of tic-tac-toe, for instance, we like to have a 3x3 three three board of some values rather than just having a single one. Now, rather than in many programming languages, the index of the array, the length of the array, will always be at the end. But in Solidity, when declaring or defining a type of an array, an array type, then it will be behind the uh, be part of the type itself. When indexing, so when looking into one of the values inside of the whole sequence, then of course you write it behind the name. And Solidity is uses zero-based indexing, which means that if you have an array of say three, length three, then the elements will be zero, one, and two. If this is still a, bit, a little bit vague, you will see how they are used in a lot of detail when we're starting to create a tic-tac-toe contract. All right, more about how tic-tac-toe works. If you've never heard of this game before, it's also known by uh, as dreadnoughts or as X's and O's. And it, you have a three by three grid where two players compete and one player places a shape in one of the in one of the squares and then the other is able to place their shape. And as soon as you have three in a row, then you win. Of course, it's also possible for the complete board to be filled up without any player winning. Now, in Solidity, the two players will be identified by different addresses. So you're able to move by creating, performing a transaction from a given address. And one of these, just for simplicity's sake, will be the creator of the contract. And when the contract is created, we will also give the address of the other player to compete with. Um, the game is over, as explained, when one of the players has three in a row or once the whole board is full. Now, usually, if we were to actually create this game and be, uh, use a blockchain underneath, then we would actually uh, use the drawing logic that shows how the game looks outside of the blockchain and only store the values inside. But because we're not actually going to do that right now and would like to have something that's easy for people to to see uh, then uh, we're going to create this drawing logic inside of solidity it will look a little bit weird but just uh, just bear with me now we do this by you creating some functions that look at the current state and return a string which we can read out and string concatenation in solidity is currently is, is nowadays done by using abi.encode packed which just concatenates whatever you you put inside over here and turning that back into a string you will see how this is used in practice if it's not a problem if you don't uh, grasp this right away because it's a bit it's a bit of a, a circumvention of how things are normally done because we dr want to draw the game logic inside of Solidity rather than outside. All right, let's move back to Remix and start building this. 
So if you followed along in our series until now, then this is what we've been ending up with in the previous uh, episodes. But this is not important for, for now. We're going to create a new contract using the plus over here in the circle and name this tic tac toe okay make sure we have uh, our pragma over here to let the compiler know again that we are actually on this version and then we'll, we start our contract now we want to keep track as explained in the slide we want to keep track of a couple of couple of things first uh, we have two addresses to keep track of of the two players that play the game so these let's just for simplicity sake call these player one and player two and then uh, we're also counting the current number of moves uh, for one this helps us to keep track of who is currently whose move it currently is but also it uh, is an easy way to make sure that we stop the game uh, in case we end up with a draw when the whole board is full because this will happen after nine moves so uh, after current move has been incremented eight times and finally we would like to create a board but rather than using integers to store in the board let us actually create an enumerable enum uh, let's name it uh, square state uh, and one square on the board can either be empty or it can be filled with an X or an O now empty is first the first element of this enumerable because when we are actually creating the board which is a 3 by 3 array of square states uh, because empty is the first value in the enumerable, the, this will be what the board is already filled with from the get-go. Now, when we actually create a new uh, a new tic-tac-toe contract, we uh, want to fill in what's inside player 1 and also what's inside player 2. So, let's create a constructor. Constructor. And we have to pass in the address of the other player. So, address player 2 and anyone is able to call this constructor and the constructor should always be public because otherwise you can't really create a smart contract and here we say that player one will now become the message.sender in other words the person that is now constructing the smart contract because they are executing the constructor and player player two will be what is passed in as the player two uh, the convention of using an underscore if you for a parameter is very common in the uh, Solidity world, but of course it's just a convention. Alright, this is enough to set up the board. Now, we would like to, to draw the current state of the board, and for that uh, create a couple of helper functions. I'm just quickly going to paste these in and go over the lines, and you can type them in yourself or copy them over from the, uh, from the episode transcription. We have a function here, square to string, that given one x position and one y position, uh, transforms the uh, what's inside the board, looks up what's inside the board at the given position, and depending on what's in there, it returns either an empty space, an x, or an o. Now, we use this function in another helper function which is called row to string which I'm going to paste above that uses this uh, string concatenation that I've talked about in the slides quickly to concatenate uh, the three values that are on a single row and finally we use another function which we call just state to string which concatenates all these rows together including new lines now this is of course already really wonderful and if we would like to we could already deploy this however of course there isn't currently anything that actually allows us to uh, to, to change the the board itself uh, but we can already try this try to run it we're on the JavaScript virtual machine we click deploy and now over here uh, for some reason it's still got oh I'm 
have selected here yet. I have to click compile first. And it tells me there's an error, of course. Why? Oh yes, I have the helper function position is in bounds. That's also a really simple helper function. Uh, the reason for this helper function is to check if a position, the given x and y, is actually inside the size of a board. So it should be larger than 0 and smaller than 3 because the different cells are numbered 0, 1 and 2. Of course it's an... Uh, by, by using this function now let's try to compile again and it compiles. And now we can actually run this. So let's remove the previous stuff, deploy it and it works and now if we track check here the state to string then it takes a real while but now we have here our state because the way remix is currently set up unfortunately the new lines that we're printing are not shown in here and this is how why uh, because of how remix displays its html so we can quickly fix this uh, in, in a bit of a hackish way which has nothing to do with solidity but with how browsers work uh, but for now it would really it really helps to uh, see the board as it's supposed to look like uh, to do this you should right click anywhere on the page and click on inspect element and on your browser it might look slightly different but probably very similar and you should select the body and in the element style uh, panel you should type white dash space colon pre dash wrap and then font dash family colon um, mono space and what this will do is it will make sure that the new lines show up and also that uh, all uh, all characters are of equal size so when we fill it in they uh, they show nice uh, a nice and even board now again if this seems weird to you it's because this is a very quick way to get, get some output out of our smart contract without introducing a whole decentralized application layer. So this is not done in production decentralized applications of course. Alright, now for the final thing to do in this episode. Let's create a function that can actually alter the current state of the board. So between the constructor and the state to string let's create a function which we will call perform move function per perform move and this takes a uint 8 for the x position and a uint 8 for the y position and it also is a public function because anyone should be able to call this and over here we will first require that uh, Thank you for watching this episode of the Tokener Explains. Like, subscribe, and tell us in the comment section what you think of this episode, or any questions you might have. Also, check out the show notes page, which we will keep up to date even when new versions of Solidity are released. Oh, and you should definitely ring the notification bell to make sure that you will know right away when a new episode of the Tokener Explains appears. The Tokener Explains is a collaboration between the Tokener and Resilia. If you are interested in the latest cryptocurrency related information and news, you should go to thetokener.com. And if you are currently building your own blockchain related product, 